said, I actually am a spiritual person, so I do believe that there's more to life that we can perceive or find out. But I, I, I just currently cannot uh, believe that there is one, one entity that has predicted and done anything because it is so surreal and and it's so insane that everything that is has happened that theoretically yes it could be one omnipotent being that we cannot comprehend as humans that did everything but at the same time it could also just be so theoretically just a coincidence so i haven't had the moment where i've been like okay the one omnipotent being has entered like i've i've experienced the connection I, I just haven't but i'm not denying that it doesn't exist this is important to me to understand that i do not deny it i just personally I'm looking for that because I want to have the experience, but I just haven't had it yet. Even though I've you know, been quite close brother to Brother Mansoor, what's the things that the brother needs to consider to accept that as a reality? That there is a creator, that that creator is one, and in fact that everything we see comes from that creator. What's that that he needs to see? How? See? I tried, I tried. So when you consider that you don't actually deny the existence of an omnipotent being because you're making this inference from looking at how things are in this world. For example, parents don't really create their children. They're just a means of bringing them in this reality. You told him everything. Why did you bring him here? <laughs> I, was, I was kidnapped by him. Let him go. I had to teach you guys yeah. to come. See, if parents were the ones to give us life and if we died as children they could be giving us life again and again and again every time we die they give us life but the fact that once children die the parents can cry their hearts off they cannot give life back to them this demonstrates to us the parents did not have the ability to give life to the children they were just a means within that process in which life is infused within the baby. The fact, the fact remains though, however, we do have life and our life also departs from our body when we die. So how do we explain who the originator of our life is? We, we have to have a reasonable explanation that makes sense. Now, if you say it's the energy, then you are giving the energy certain attributes, certain characteristics of having the ability to give life with choice and will. Like willing, imagine if you have, I have a phone on my pocket, right? It's got lots of battery in it, energy. But it can't decide to say, okay, tell Mansu to do this, like and that. It's not conscious. So energy, energy to give us life and to take that life away has to be conscious, self-aware and also have a will. If you say that this that the energy has, then it's no longer just simply energy. It's a being who is self-aware and a being necessarily that will be always in existence because you, you do accept that something has to always exist if we exist now. There cannot be a time when there was absolute nothingness. I mean, yes. Because if there was... No, no, I mean, I mean, as in yes, as in like, there is a time of nothingness. It has always been. If there was absolute nothingness at one point, yes. what we mean by nothingness is, this nothing yes. does not have anything. It's free from energy, free from potential of having any energy, free from any consciousness, free from having any laws, free from having anything. I understand, but the thing is like, since what you said, for example, that uh, in the belief that God is omnipotent and all-powerful, right? So theoretically, if he is all-powerful, therefore it, there should be nothingness. 
since nothingness is the absence of God as well and of everything as you said of energy and anything so if God is all powerful all knowing and you know nothingness is not a thing no it is it's the absence of a thing exactly so so, 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 if, God, so if, if God is all powerful then he can create nothing no nothing is not a thing no it is it is how is that thing tell me what sort of properties does he have well the thing about Nothing. Define, define nothing. What, what sort of properties does nothing, nothing have? Nothingness is the absence of anything. <laughs> right. Yes. So it has Bravo. no properties. But, 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 the thing is, but still, and the absence of, any, of anything is still something. Since no. No, 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 no. Something you, is not nothing and nothing can, is not something. Well, I think that if you can concept something, if your mind can perceive something, even if you, your mind cannot perceive something, it still is something that exists. No, no. No, we no, don't no, call no, it something. No, no, for example, let's take, for example... It's no thing. No, no, look, like, for example, let's take the James Webb telescope right now, right? Okay. We have perceived, I think it was like two weeks ago, we actually found galaxies that are so old that it contradicts all modern science of the Big Bang, right? We have found galaxies that are billions of years old. So we found something when we thought there should not be something in nothingness, we found something. So nothingness had something, so it is an object that we didn't, we couldn't perceive before. Science is never expecting nothingness. Well, it does. You need nothing, well you need... Because nothingness is devoid of any properties. It doesn't simply exist. Nothingness is non-existence. Yes, but my point is that nothingness... How can you create non-existence and it's, it's not a sensible no, no, my, my, way of even speaking? My, my point is that nothingness in its... Nothingness is nothing. Absolutely right. But the concept of nothingness gives it a thing. So... This is where I, I, I don't follow it. I'll tell you the reason why. That's fine. Because we understand what something is. And we are saying opposite to that something is nothing, which is absolutely no thing. Something and no thing. Yes. That no thing has no existence. Exactly, but the thing is... So, so when you say God is powerful enough to create non-existence, non-existence is not a thing to create in the first place. But that's... But, yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's my point. That we as humans cannot perceive nothingness, but something that is omnipotent, almighty, all-knowing, as we agree that God is, right? No, conceptually, should be, should, should you can be, understand should, that. Yes. But it should be. A that is no, no. This is where we agree. Conceptually, yes. there is a no thing called nothing. Yes. To to make us appreciate, understand what is a thing or something. My point is this: there cannot be a time where there is no thing, because from no thing, nothing will emerge. No thing will emerge. No thing will come from nothing. Something will never come out of nothing. That, that's my point. If God is almighty and all-knowing, He can or no, so, so can so God, so God, create so God from is nothing. God, We're so talking God, about... I agree. No, 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 I agree. Mm. So God can create from nothing is exactly. what, we, what we accept. Because yes. Allah says in the Quran, yeah, yeah, exactly. Allah created this universe from nothing. Exactly. He simply wills it into existence. Yeah, but, but so right think, now you said that nothing doesn't exist. No, no, no. So, yeah, no, 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 nothing no, no, is no, no. I, th I, think, I, think, I think you're on cross... Uh, yeah, maybe. Problem. What, what Brother Mansoor is saying Sorry, is that you can't conceptualize an existence where there is nothing there has to be something in existence always yeah i understand but but as no, no, so hold on a second so now the issue is what is this something that has to exist by necessity what we're trying in other words you can never conceptualize an existence where there is just nothing out there well, Actually, my point was, <coughs> thank you, brother, for clarification. <coughs> you see, you're already assuming God there. I'm saying, yes. in the absence of a concept of a God, if somebody says there was no thing, nothing, from that nothing, you will never get something. So that means if we have something now, there has to be always something. And we say that always something is actually the originator of everything the necessary we call existence. God yes but then but by that logic then God is not all-powerful why is he not all-powerful because you're saying that God is the, the, the he was always of, there yeah exactly so what's, so, a, what's the definition of all-powerful 
all powerful. It was the what did you What's say? the definition of that? Well, the all powerful means that like all powerful that he can do anything. Anything. Okay. Yeah. So we exactly. accept that. We accept that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But by saying he cannot be created out of nothing, since he has always been there, no, no, he's you not, already are limiting he him is by not, not existing in nothingness. He is not being created. The fact that no, no, we are no, no, here, no, no, something. He exists. So he has to always exist is the point. No, no, no. But the yeah, but, but you said that in nothing, is he, no, nothing no, exists, no, no, right? No, no, brother, you're missing the point. The point is... Okay, maybe I am. If something <laughs> has to come into existence, yes. then it's deficient. Yeah. It's not all-powerful. If something always exists of, by necessity, then it's all-powerful. It will it's have not, the qualities. And it's not limited. You see my point? No beginning, no yeah, beginning, yeah. It's okay. and I, no I, beginning. Now, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. now fundamentally, no the fundamentally, the issue here is this. I think in some, to some, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but you do, you do acknowledge this concept that there is a necessary existence that underpins everything else. Yeah, there has to be. A there has to be. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Now the issue is, how do we define what this thing is? Yeah, exactly. Okay. What are the qualities what are the and characteristics so, brother, or properties or attributes of that necessary existence? Yes. Yeah. If you some some whole thing is just energy, then it doesn't really give us a convincing answer because you have to make that energy conscious, having a will and so on, and eventually you actually merge with the qualities of God. So instead of saying it's God. Why do people then say it's just energy and yeah. some kind of spirituality and so on? Yeah. Yeah. We are saying to explain our universe and our existence and everything that is operational within this cosmos, it is reasonable to conclude that there is a creator who originated everything. That creator is self-aware, of course. That creator has lots of attributes of perfection. No deficiencies whatsoever. All perfect attributes, like for example, knowledge and power, there will be no limits and deficiencies. There will be no bounds. So that's what we're saying. So when you want to know about God, your heart and your mind should be directing to this concept in which the Creator should be free from deficiencies in the attributes. And what we are inviting you to is Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, who is exactly that, the most perfect being, who is not in any way deficient in his names and attributes. The absolute perfection belongs to him. So when we say he is merciful, no one can be merciful, more merciful than him. When I say him, or I'm not you talking about him. Yeah, 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 you understand. Yeah. All hearing, all yeah. knowing. Yeah, so, all so when we want to follow and submit and surrender ourselves. How much time do you have you got left? <laughs> like two more minutes, my friend. Two minutes. I'm sorry, I'm Islam, not here. Islam simply encourage us yes. to wake up to this reality that we should be submitting ourselves and surrendering our will willingly, sincerely to the will of one true God as he has sent his prophets and messengers with to submit to him. Which is last of the, who is the last prophet and messenger that he sent? Muhammad? Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, I was so, so nervous right now. So, like, so is it got wrong? All, all, all we have to do, <laughs> my friend, all we have to do <laughs> is make that choice willingly yeah. to submit to God to his will that is expressed through the will by sending prophets and messenger. The prophet has demonstrated what the will of God is. Can I can I just for five minutes? Because I'll yeah. just take five more minutes. I have just a different question. Okay. So I'm part of well since you know I grew up in Germany, I grew up in a Christian society, which is obviously different for, to a Muslim society. Um, I'm part of a very small uh, group of Templar Knights, theoretically. It's more of like a, a order order of trying to get the understanding of mo modern religion and ancient religion correlates with science. So basically, what our what we think is important to understand nowadays is that modern um, religion is diverted throughout the years to ancient religion. So, for example, like back then, 
the ancient religion, if you take it from back then and you put it into our time now, religion is a base stone for, for the modern society. So for example, people from an Islamic country will understand somebody from another Islamic country on a cultural level since they can both find a way to interact with each other through Islam, right? For example, how the German Christian can find a way to interact with uh, a French person since our culture, the base of our culture and our societies is rooted in Christianity. The same is with Islam. So my question basically is, do you think that modern religion is rooted in the idea or like you know the, the, the do you do would you also agree let, let's rephrase it do you would you also agree that religion currently with our new technology our science etc is more of just a base stone of our cultures and not a belief system that should rival for example science so that you you know subject that, that science See, is fact in, in, and, yeah, in yeah. Islam you know, it's, it's very clearly in the Quran. It says, Allah says that we perfected your religion. Yeah? Yes, there is yes, nothing yes. in Islam, there is nothing you, uh, nothing to add, nothing to take off. That's, that, that, it. that's fine. What about, can, can I make it very simple for you? Yeah. We've already agreed that the concept of a necessary existence yes. is very reasonable. Yes. Now the question arises. Did this necessary existence try to communicate with me? How can I establish that through objective evidence and reasons? When we look at the Quran, we find that there is no other explanation other than the claim that the claimant is making, Allah, that this is a miracle from your Lord and it could not be any other way. That, that's fine. Now, 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 that's, now, 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 that's, just, but that's not what I mean. No, 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 but no, hold on a second. Okay, sorry. So every other belief system, this concept of modern religion and it's come, it's come about this way or what, none of that matters if you can establish that the Quran is indeed as it claims to be from the Creator, because then that becomes your paradigm, your reality, your explanation on everything. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that, Include, including Templar beliefs or anything else for that matter. Absolutely, I understand. Now, when we look at the Quran, yeah. and we look at the linguistic miracles of the Quran, we look at all of the other miracles of the Quran and it claiming to be a miracle, yes. we come to an objective reason to accept it to be from that Creator. Yeah. And so, when people say to me, but isn't religion something that people have just done this to, or, or people have just thought this of, or people have modern religion, they've, they've, it's because of social... Well, that's one explanation. But the other explanation could be very simple. The other explanation could be that it is a revelation from God and man has found commonality all around the world to att be attracted to this message that's come from the Creator. And that's the other explanation, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just to add what to the question they've asked. Yeah, yeah. In Islam, broadly speaking, there are like three broad categories of religion. One is the God-sent religion, which is God-sanctioned religion. He sent prophets and messengers. One is totally man-made by their own self, working out how to live their life, how to understand the reality and so on. More and out. the other one is in between. It was originally sent by God, but they got corrupted with man's ideas, women's ideas, and so on and so forth, right? Islam says, from the very beginning, human beings were created. There was only one acceptable religion to God, and that is the religion of submission to God. As time went by, people tried to corrupt and confuse and change and alter this religion. God sent prophets and messengers again and so on to bring them back to the same religion. So Islam is not the only new religion. Right. It's the first and the most foremost religion that God sent From initially Adam. and now it's the finalized in its perfection and culmination and continuation of the prophets and messengers message From, prophet right? Adam. From, From God. Man. So so what we're saying is to summarize then all these modern religions is either could be people's own efforts in trying to understand how we should understand God yeah. and reality and so on and so forth with or without some aspects of existing divine religion of the past. What Brother Abbas is saying, we should focus on 
pristine, adul adulterated message of God, his religion which is pure, not man com co corrupted or adulterated or changed. And the Quran offers you some of the ways you can assert and convince yourself that this indeed is the case. You don't have to go and think about all these hundreds and thousands of modern religions. Because Islam, even though it's the same religion God sent before, it still is modern in its application today and it will be modern in the future in its application. Why? Because it is universal in its approach. It approaches it's human being, it's, human being yeah. in their psyche and their needs and it caters for them now, before and in the future at all places at all times. And that's good and I, I, I think it's amazing that, that, as I said, that people have found it for themselves to believe. I personally, as I said, I've just never had that yet moment, you know what? But I respect it a lot. I, Peter Fogel, don't forget, Peter Fogel. Yeah, yeah, Peter Fogel. Yeah, yeah, Peter Fogel. I, would go to, I would go to Sapiens. Uh, unfortunately. No, for you're gonna go. Yeah. But I'd go to Sapiens, the website, uh, sapiens.org, is, is that right? Um, they've got very, very good articles on there about the miracles of the Quran. In particular, they go through a, a, a 90 minute article on the shortest surah of the Quran, which is Al Kawthar. Okay, I'll, I'll look into it, but unfortunately, the, really no problem. To... Can I say one more thing just real quick? Uh, I think you're recording that, right? So, inform yourself about all religions. It's important to understand and be open to any other form of religion, even if you don't agree. Be respectful. It doesn't matter what religion you are. Be respectful of prophets, we gods, be. and believe. That's Please a, do. That's our card. Email us. Much. We'll send you free information out. Thank you very much. Nice it was you. very nice meeting you, you nice all. Nice to meet you. Your name was Queen? Kiernan. Kiernan. Yes. Thank you. Nice meeting you. It was nice to meet you all. Yeah, it's fine. I think just you are speaking very to close to the truth, but you have to be just willing to accept you, no matter about your what you feel, and secondly, to read more about this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. So I just have. Well, thank you very much. It was that very nice to you. Are you, are you, are you flying tomorrow to Germany? Yeah, we're flying tomorrow morning to Germany, and unfortunately, I'll I'll be well, fortunately for me, but I'm going to move to Japan in three weeks. Oh wow! So you speak Japanese? A little bit. Okay. Not much. I'm. That's what I'm going to learn. Okay. So nice. I won't be around anytime. But email us. Thank you very Continue much. Continue your journey. Spend more time yes. on this conversation yeah. than the mobile phone you're going to buy or the Japanese you're going to learn. Yeah. <laughs> because well, that will help you for a few years. Inshallah ta'ala, this will help you for all eternity. Thank you very much. Yes? Thank you, everyone. All right. Very all nice best. meeting all you. All the best. Thank you, you take very care. much. Look Have after yourself. Nice. Thank you very much, guys. I'm 25. Is there any anything you'd like to you wrap up? I tell <laughs> you wrap up. <laughs> Just to see. I mean, it is good to be open-minded to understand different concepts people have, different understandings of the realities, and so on. But one thing people should, one thing people should bear in mind, though. Even though there's so many ways people are describing that probably leads to God, Islam gives us a different perspective. It says there can only be one way to God. And all other ways that people go and deviate away from this, they would not lead to God. But in fact, it's like this, where Prophet Muhammad actually drew a line on the sand in front of his companion. And he says, and he drew several other lines. He says, this straight line is a line that is, will take you to God. And all the other lines, there is a Satan appointed in each one waiting for it to lead you astray to hellfire. Okay? That's the reality. There are people who think you can achieve nirvana, this, you know, success. You can achieve salvation, you can, you can be saved, you can be with God by following any way you like, every way leads to God. But actually this is not correct. Because if God is someone who says he doesn't appreciate people ascribing partners to him, and somebody says it doesn't matter if you worship a son of God or a daughter of God or a wife of God, and it's okay. But God says otherwise, that he does not appreciate people to insult him to say what is not right, what is not appropriate. I mean, imagine, you know, you do that to your friend, your, your husband, your wife, saying something which is not befitting of them. They would not appreciate it and like it. 
and Wallillahi al you know, God belongs to most highest description. And yet, how can we say that, you know, you can worship a God through worshiping a rat or an elephant or a tripod or whatever? We have to really use our minds and our critical thinking to leave the ways that will lead us to hellfire. But follow the way of the prophets, as salihin wa siddiqeen wa shuhada, yeah? and nabiin, of course. That is the way Allah, our God, Creator, is pleased with. And isn't that what Muslims pray at least 17 times a day in Surah Al Fatiha? Ihdina Surah Al Mustaqim. Keep us on the straight path. And then what is this? Allah describes us Surah Al Ladina An'amta alayhim. That is the path that we should be seeking. So this is the message I want to bring, even though it's, it's nice to be open, but we have to be open to the straight path, not the crooked path that will lead us astray. And the thing is that, you know, Allah says in the Quran that the truth is clear from the error. In other words, if you use your faculty of reason, then the truth will become plain to you, it will become manifest to you. So Islam is not about this feels nice, this looks nice, this sounds nice. No! Allah says use your akal, use your intellect, reason. And the Quran says this so many times. Do they not use their reason? Do they not think? Do you not ponder on the Quran? Because Allah is telling you, if you ponder, if you think, if you reason, then the truth will become clear from the error. And so, you know, Islam is a beautiful religion because it's not just about having faith. It's about using your akal, your intellect that Allah has given you to establish the truth. And then you have the faith. So Allah says there are angels. We accept there are angels. Why? Because we've established that this Quran could have only come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it's claimed. And isn't it interesting when the angels are dragging the disbelievers to hell, what do the angels say to those disbelievers? Did you not use your reason? In other words, had you used your reason, you would not be in this place today. You would have been of the people of the paradise. So my brothers and my sisters, our reason for coming here and having these conversations is that we want to reason and provide evidence. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, if you speak, your tr if you speak the truth, provide your evidence. Because in Islam, it's an evidence-backed religion. It's not just about faith. Otherwise, you'll worship a tree, you'll worship a cow, you'll worship a dog, you'll worship a human being. And anything can be made reasonable to you with, a, with an elaborate conversation or explanation. But when we use our intellect, when we reason, Alhamdulillah, we arrive at Islam. And Alhamdulillah for Islam. Jazakallah khair for listening to us, brothers and sisters. Please remember us in your dua and support the great work Mashara Dawa Wise and other Dawa channels are doing because there's a great need for Dawa today out of empathy and love for humanity, we need to pass this message on. And inshallah, with the hope that Allah guides the people and saves many more inshallah from the perils of the depression and the hedonistic lifestyle of this earth and the greater harm in the hereafter. We should have empathy and love for our humanity, for our brothers and sisters, and try to give the message of Islam in its purest and its beautiful form that we can, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa So with that, Brother Abbas from EF Dawah and Mansur from Dawah Wise, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.